doctors who have been in an is anybody here a doctor situation what happened my mom has had to respond twice on flights when someone was in distress the first time was in the air and a guy was having a diabetic low she monitored him until we landed the second time was sitting on the tarmac when a guy had a stroke they delayed the flight and took the dude off the plane she also said that after the first one the airline sent her a thank you card and said please use these enclosed vouchers to get tickets to a destination of your choosing but they forgot to include the vouchers she said she thought it would be rude to write back and say hey you forgot the vouchers that's how they get ya also good job on your mom in both cases forgot ha 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 just kidding around my friend has had it happen twice to hi monsieur both heart related in restaurants was able to use a defibrillator to save one's life and the other unfortunately passed defibrillators don't work if the heart is completely stopped and cpr is a long shot and didn't work in this case my wife is a doctor she passed out on a plane trip and we had to see if there were any other doctors well don't leave us hanging were there any you astro underscore professor no she's still passed out on that plane my father doctor 30 years ago was sent to work in southern italy although he already lived with my mother in the north and a large part of the salary ended up in tickets to return by plane every weekend the fact is that during the flight to the south lasting about one hour they do not give anything to eat except they pass with a trolley to give candies needless to say the classic situation of the old woman who chokes on it and cannot breathe my dad was called in with a few asterisk heavy asterisk blows on the back he managed to get the candy out of the poor old woman a week goes by and the day of the return on the plane comes the trolley with the candies passes promptly and out of nowhere a girl sitting in front of my father who was trying to get one is blocked by her friend don't take it last week they told me that an old woman got choked up and to free her a doctor had to slap her asterisk really asterisk asterisk really asterisk card on the back quote dot i like the thought of an italian flight where everyone panics but they find a doctor and he assesses the situation very carefully and he chooses not to use the heimlich maneuver but instead of that, professionally Alexis slap are on the back, but like really hard. I'm a nurse. We're taught to do five hard back slaps before moving on to abdominal thrusts. Edit. I'm in the UK. It may well be different elsewhere but that's certainly what we're taught here. While we were on our descent, somebody lurched over in their chair and became unresponsive, tachycardic, and diaphoretic. The whole episode lasted for about two minutes. Then he woke up and vomited. I figured he had an arrhythmia, and recommended he not take his connecting flight to Cleveland, and instead go to the air. Ems was waiting on the ground and helped him off the plane. I actually saw him again on my return flight home. He told me he was diagnosed with an arrhythmia, and made an appointment to see a cardiologist in our hometown happened in an airplane. Me, as a fourth grade medical student and my professor at an airplane for going to a medical congress. In our country, a man 50-ish years old lost his consciousness. We got there before the cabin. Crew yelled the situation, had to do CPR for 25 minutes until we have landed at an airport for emergency landing. We still had a 1.5 hour of way and we also landed off with him to make him reach hospital safely. It was a rural military airport. Airplane waited us to return, took a 40 minutes later after we landed, got to our destination, in return flight, we were upgraded to business class and taken from our hotel by a private chaffer. 25 minutes of CPR. You must have been exhausted afterwards. Even five straight minutes on a dummy and I was telling the dummy he wasn't going to make it. You are awesome. And your English is great. We were two people and turned in every two minutes. I would be giving breathes and my professor would be. On compression or vice versa in minute 15, we got a shockable rhythm so we gave some shock also. That ambulance, he had a regular heartbeat, it was nuts. 
fourth grade medical student. Hey guys we found Doogie Hauser over here. I'm not a doctor but I'm a nurse. Just yesterday morning, I heard these women screaming in the hallway of my hotel. We need help. Does anyone know CPR? I ran out the door and told these women I was a nurse. They took me to the front lobby where they found a young woman who seemed to have overdosed. She wasn't breathing but she had a pulse at first it started to get weaker then stopped altogether. I had to do four rounds of CPR before I felt a pulse again and it was right as the EMTs were walking in. I work in nursing homes and most people are DNRs. I've never had to do CPR on anybody. It's crazy that was my first time and it was at a fucking hotel and not even work. Then you just so happened to ask this question. LOL. You're amazing, she was so lucky you were there. I'm currently a first year resident. Internal medicine in Sweden. This happened last year. About a year after I graduated so I was still relatively fresh out of med school. I was flying home from my vacation from the Mediterranean. A three hour flight. When they announced on the speaker system that they were looking for a healthcare professional. Stood up when they called out a second time. Maybe 15 seconds later. It was me and a bit older nurse who went up to the front rows where a middle-aged male was awake, but unresponsive, as I didn't really have a lot of experience and was somewhat panicking. Kept the panic internally to myself. It's scary being alone. I fell back to ATLS and eventually noticed that I had a D problem. Decreased strength in one of his arms and one-sided facial droop that was quite mild. Long story short, I suspected a stroke but couldn't really do a whole lot. We were 30 minutes away from landing at the time of the initial call. They didn't deviate or anything. I didn't feel like I did that much to be honest except say that I suspected a stroke and ask if they could call an ambulance to the airport. The airplane seemed to land a bit faster than it usually does and as we went off the runway, there was an ambulance waiting off the taxiway. When the ambulance staff boarded the plane, I gave a short report and that's basically it. I got a thank you from the relatives and the stewardesses. They asked me to write down my name and email but I haven't heard anything since. Edit. Spelling. Out of curiosity, what do doctors actually do about a stroke? I always see adverts saying the faster you are, the more of the person you save. But how do they do that? Great question. Basically, to know if you can, should do something. You have to verify a stroke by doing a CT scan of the head. If it's a hemorrhagic stroke, you can either try to revert the medications that may be causing the bleeding. In some cases you may need to talk to a neurosurgeon if the bleeding may be evacuated. But these types of strokes are a bit rare, covering roughly 15% of all strokes. In terms of ischemic strokes, aka a clot that stops blood flow to a part of the brain. The most important thing you can do is to try and remove, destroy the blood clot causing the symptoms. Within 4.5 hours, weaken thrombolis, that is give a medicine that destroys the clot. You can also endovascularly go in through an artery into the brain and pull out the clot but I personally don't have a whole lot of experience with these patients. This is why time equals brain. The faster you come to the hospital and seek medical attention, the faster we can diagnose and treat, and more percent of the affected part of the brain may survive. Note, I'm not a neurologist. The above is a decent summary of stroke care. If you're within 4.5 of last known normal, you can give the blood clot busting medication, assuming a favorable head CT and no medical contraindications. Bleeding strokes aren't all that rare actually. So this head CT is very important. If you're within as much as 24 hours, you may be a candidate for having the blood clot taken out by an endovascular approach. But this depends on something called a perfusion study, which looks at the already dead brain tissue and the not dead yet brain tissue. Note, I'm a neurologist who treats strokes. I was flying out of my home airport during my intern year. I had just finished my cardiology rotation. Intensive care, 
The flight attendant asked for a doctor, because a passenger had severe chest pain. It turned out there was also my senior resident and my CCU attending on the same flight. Unknown to me, all three of us had worked together for the past two months and signed off the CCU the day before. Like a well-oiled machine, we took care of the patient. He was stable thankfully. An ambulance was waiting for him when we landed, and I was very grateful to both my senior resident and my attending at the time. What a coincidence. Also, because the most exposure I've had to those terms, resident and attending, is via scrubs. I'm imagining this scene as Dr. Cox, JD, and probably Elliot working together on the patient Cox probably yelling at Janet to pay some fucking attention or whatnot. Not in the medical profession but from my time in the military I knew basic life-saving techniques like CPR and what to do when someone is drowning. My story involved my son when he was six years old. We were in town for my father's funeral. That night at the hotel the kids were in the pool. It was packed. He was swimming in the shallow end. Next thing I know a girl is holding him saying, I think he's drowning. I pulled him from the pool, asked if he could breathe. He shook his head no. I laid him down, rolled him to his side and hit his back. He started throwing up lungfuls of water. Finally he says he can breathe. My wife is freaking out and he is white as a ghost he threw up probably four to five times. Worst part is when I pulled him from the pool my first thought is I'm gonna watch home die. My wife said I reacted so fast that I had to H out of the pool before she realized what was happening. I almost lost my composure when he looked at me and said thanks for saving me dad. I recommend if you can, to take some basic life savings classes. Super lucky that the girl noticed. Used to be a lifeguard and it's super difficult to spot people drowning when the pool is busy and loud. Drowning people don't make much of a racket. They just slip away. I warn parents to keep an eye on their own kids in the pool even if you think they can swim in. There is a lifeguard on duty. Happy fun can turn to sorrow pretty damn quickly and kids often overestimate their ability. I ended up giving that girl a bouquet of flowers the next morning that were left over from my father's funeral. She was very touched and I made sure to know that she was very instrumental in saving his life. I have a doctorate but I'm not a medical doctor. But shortly after receiving my doctorate I was on a transatlantic flight and the flight attendant came around asking if any one of us was a doctor. I, very, briefly considered answering jokingly, yes, but not that kind of doctor. But the man in front of me said that he was, and as he was leaving with the attendant, he said to his wife, I've been waiting my whole career for this. Quote, about 15 minutes later he came back, slightly disgruntled, turned out a woman in first class was having a panic attack, and she ended up with three doctors around her all frustrated that they didn't get to do an emergency. Tracheotomy at 35,000 feet. I can just imagine a doctor on a flight like emotional distress. Fuck and flinging his stethoscope across the cabin. Stethoscopes are expensive. No one is flinging their steths. This woman has trouble breathing. We need to perform an emergency tracheotomy stat. But I'm feeling fine now. Really. There is no trouble at all. Carrot. Don't you ruin this for me. Listen. I'm a doctor. I know what I'm doing. Now. Does anyone have a sharp knife? A pen would also do the trick? Carrot. I'm getting so excited. Quote. Sir, we have a scalpel in our emergency kit. No, I need a plastic knife. Quote, Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.